very much, much. Uh, for your humble words uh, mr joshi and it's always a pleasure to be with you in the company as well as with uh, mr batra and uh, mahesh no doubt is my great friend and uh, colleague in all conferences we are next to each other particularly nes conferences or sspc conference so we had been working on uh, this peer of activity for quite uh, close to 3 decades and uh, this has been our uh, passion area and uh, this is one of the reasons where we wish to contribute because many of the uh, topics discussed be it uh, under the banner of functional coatings or any protective coating for that matter it is not available in the general educational books which we are coming across in engineering or management concepts corrosion has been a neglected topic for many years and people do realize that there is a corrosion happening but at the same time they are not able to find out a permanent solution or a management uh, practice so this has been a problem they only you know take a sort of a temporary solace like this is my maintenance budget and this much of paint i will apply or this is going to be my uh, refurbishment practices so this is not the way corrosion is handled there are challenges from various uh, disciplines and the topic which i have uh, taken up is also not so very visible uh, or well thought of in the initial stages and it has picked up lot of interest in the recent decade corrosion under insulation is a topic which i am going to speak so i would like to uh, bring it under the functional characteristic because this is a very specific requirement a functional requirement fireproofing is a functional requirement as you said anti fouling is a functional requirement so these are all various types of coatings which are not generalized and uh, no doubt it works against corrosion but uh, it is meant for a specific purpose where the challenges are much severe and specific so with that let me get into my topic i am presenting my screen so um, i represent burja and we are the leaders in high performance protective coatings in this country and uh, i am fortunate to be the first keynote speaker thank you very much kemtech for this every one of you know burja very well but to just put you on a a quick understanding burja was an international company and now continues to be an indian multinational company so we are situated in various locations across the globe and we are now fourth in asia and seventh in the world with respect to decorative and 14th largest as overall crossing more than 1 billion us dollars and burger continues to be the fastest growing company in in the country when you are talking about uh, corrosion under insulation protective coatings is a must because for something to get fixed it was Uh, should be noticeable but insulation covers the corrosion underneath therefore it is um, missing the eyes of many people and only when the damages are so severe that we have a clue to understanding but by then there is very difficult situation coming up shutdown periods have to be summoned and it is not an easy task when the production and process comes to a standing halt so this is one of the reasons where this particular area has to be considered right from the project stage and that is where the understanding and awareness comes to the picture as a functional requirement when you talk about corrosion under insulation it is no doubt a major problem because the insulation whatever has been done is not going to be 100% full proof be it above ground or buried the insulation techniques have grown up a lot but still we are not able to combat the different aggressive uh, uh, attacks when you are talking about piping or equipment or vessels in any mid sized chemical plant or a refinery we find that the length of this particular area can exceed more than 500 kilometers as well and the surface area can be more than 1.5 lakh square meters jacketing using of sealants despite that water still finds an opportunity to pass through data from all these operating facilities for a period of 10 years shows that 60% of the insulation has 
contain the, the corrosive moisture. Therefore, the damaged insulation can hit a maintenance cost of not less than 30% of the annual budget. And this is how it becomes more severe and the need to handle this particular problem, corrosion under insulation becomes very, very important and critical. When you talk about corrosion under insulation means there is a temperature, be it a negative or a positive temperature. And what happens with respect to carbon steel or stainless steel, there can be a general corrosion or a localized corrosion or in some cases pitting corrosion or stress corrosion cracking depending upon the type of metallurgy used and the temperature in which it is getting sustained. The corrosion rate have gone to more than 0.5 millimeter per year, more than what it is expected of. And the coatings which are there present now are getting this bonded. They brittle, they crack, and they allow the corrosion to pass under the insulation in a very severe way. In the case of lower temperatures, the coatings are now subjected to becoming less flexible and therefore less uh, uh, it is able to protect it. So in both the cases of higher temperature and lower temperature, corrosion under insulation has to be handled with a point of... Uh, so we understand the range of temperatures, which is cryogenic or hot, which can be a reason. The thermal shock and the cyclic temperatures of the metal interface is a very important concern for coatings to perform. When we talk about corrosion ingress, what we try to explain is, whenever you have a cell created, an anode and a cathode available on the metal with its metallic pathway already established within the material itself, the electrolyte is a point of concern when it comes to coating to handle it. Water, moisture, contaminants like sulfate, chlorides can also be present, which is going to and with the presence of temperature, it's making it more difficult for the coatings to work. So not all types of coatings are recommended to work under uh, insulation. For time long, inorganic zinc silicates had been a product of choice for uh, any area under insulation because inorganic zinc silicate for its sacrificial nature was able to give uh, excellent corrosion protection as also uh, an opportunity to take a higher temperature of up to 400 degrees. But quite uh, adversely, what has happened under this situation of CUI, zinc, will switch its potential when the temperature crosses more than 80. So instead of zinc sacrificing, the iron underneath becomes an anode and starts corroding. So this is where the challenge was learned over a period of time, and that is where new products came into the picture. So classifying that as per NACE SP0198, we have different uh, temperatures and the CUI classification of one to four gives you a temperature range for which we may have to address with different types of coatings. Now, the practice of corrosion control under thermal insulation and fireproofing materials as SP0198 gives you a broader understanding. There are high built epoxies or epoxy phenolics or Novalax thermal spirit, aluminiums, and inorganic copolymer matrix. These are products which are available in this area as of now. These generic coating systems with the guideline recommendations have to be followed when we look into options to stop this corrosion. The typical test methods for these products are thermal cycling, that is your thermal shock, and uh, give you a higher temperature, lower temperature, and drying it, wetting it, all this type of different type of tests which are being followed to understand uh, the resistance which it can offer to varying temperatures and operation conditions. And in also certain conditions, we need to check upon the weathering parameters and the heat condition to parameters. Now, when you look at the overall uh, summary of all this type of test, ISO 9227 or 2812 and ISO 6270 and 4628 have been looked upon as a guiding uh, uh, reference when it comes to the heat condition or weathering cured and the how many hours it is able to take care of this type of services. When you talk about thermal cyclic, it is more of an in-house standard wherein we subject it to 10 cycles or 20 cycles and try to understand what happens when there's going to be a, a thermal shock or a change in temperatures. 
corrosion under insulation field specific test is a very interesting one and we require a coating for thermal service above 100 degrees it should not only take care of cyclic boiling water but also handle steam and drying conditions with considerable time in intermittent immersion services and we are projecting those data as a very aggressive uh, test which a coating is able to pass through with, to perform ideally under a operating condition the addition of any coating is very important and a range of between 2 to 5 uh, megapascals is considered a very good coating addition and therefore we'll be in a position to recommend such type of coatings for these services so when you look upon an ideal system for a corrosion and insulation coating it should not only be successful but to handle the corrosion but also be you know uh, compatible to the insulation it should offer you the barrier properties and also be compatible with the service operating conditions so when you talk about the corrosion control it should typically offer whenever we talk about corrosion under insulation we try to handle the three layers of protection the protective coatings has to be in place the insulation has to be uh, uh, there and perfect and uh, the cladding has to be there which is going to protect the insulation so the three layers of protection involves protective coatings which is going to be the heart of the entire protection when we talk about the criteria for coating we look at the operating temperature we also look at the application and site requirements we look at the surface preparation requirements for the coating to be in place and the compatibility with the insulating materials so when you are talking about operating temperature the coating has to take the stress for being flexible enough to take care of the different range of temperatures and the temperature cycles it has to take care of the internal stress and there should not be any loss of adhesion between the coating and the material despite the temperature increase or decrease when you talk about application requirements we have a challenge as how we are going to apply the coating on an existing pipeline if it is in project stage fantastic if it is going to be on an operating pipeline where you need to upgrade it to a, with a good coating system and an insulation then working on heights the nature of the substrate has to be understood extent of rusting has to be understood how we are going to prepare this particular metal and how are we going to apply the coating is it by spray or brush how much of shutdown time we need to take and what is the temperature at which uh, uh, point we are going to do the application so surface preparation the rust grades can be c d g or h during maintenance we need to work on it and we need to also identify what is the type of material is it a carbon steel or a stainless steel therefore we have different challenges with respect to cleaning the substance when it is carbon steel it's fine it can be blast cleaned effectively when it is during project but when it is pitted and corroded the challenge of cleaning is more more crucial and we need to ensure that there are no chlorides or salt contamination on the pitted areas during the process of cleaning so efficient amount of surface preparation has to be given be it uh, carbon steel or stainless steel when it is stainless steel we have to be all the more careful because chloride increase can cause pitting corrosion and the pitting can really make a hole through the steel so we have to be very careful and many of the pitting is not visible to the eye so we have to have a careful inspection before preparation compatibility of the insulation material is very very important and uh, this can cause the coating itself to deteriorate or become soft or brittle and we have to understand what is uh, the coating prior to installing and how is this going to uh, work with it so this is very very important so we look at the typical performance comparison the three important product line which are being offered by most of the leading co corporates like epoxy phenolex was an ideal choice initially subsequently novalax came and now we are with inorganic copolymer matrix so what are they and how do they work epoxy phenolex normally take care of temperatures of around 150 whereas with higher temperatures you know we will not be in a position to maintain or the thermal cyclic uh, resistance is not going to be more effective in the case of epoxy phenolex either by increasing dft or by uh, having a higher temperature range 
but epoxy novalex had exhibited excellent resistance not only to the heat but also to the chemicals and to the condensed water at elevated temperatures and it was able to handle up to 230 degrees centigrade when it comes to inorganic copolymer matrix these are products again which are direct to metal coatings its its expansion thermal expansion nearly matches to that of substrate therefore it exhibits not only really good thermal cyclic resistance and it also includes cryogenic services so these are the solutions for a healthy pipeline under insulation a quick a review on the coating on the performances yes the four important parameters are the salt spray resistance which is far better in the case of epoxy novalac whereas when it comes to adhesion also yes it is fantastic but when it comes to temperature ranges the novalax are better than the phenolix and the inorganic copolymer matrix are far better when compared to the earlier two so cui coating is a silent protector and we have to ensure that this is seriously considered during the project stage itself to ensure that the maintenance budgets are preserved thank you very much for the time and we always you know appreciate people connecting with us through protect on help desk we'll be in a position to give you tailor made services to handle your corrosion problems it's time for questions i leave it back to the chair